attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and attention deficit disorder are neurological and behaviour related conditions and they cause difficulty in concentrating, impulsiveness and excessive energy. Individuals with ADHD not only have a challenge in concentrating but they also have a problem in keeping still. Those with ADHD are typically more disruptive than individuals with ADD. ADHD has an onset age of 7, but this disorder can continue throughout the teen years and well into adulthood. It's estimated ADHD affects 9% of American children between the ages of 13 and 18, and over 4% of adults. According to the NIH's National Institute of Mental Health, the number of children being diagnosed with ADHD is increasing, but it's unclear why. Most physicians and research indicates the increase in the ADHD is directly linked to the food the children eat, how they sleep and how they breathe. In fact, recent research suggests sleep deprivation, circadian rhythm disturbances and sleep disordered breathing can lead to the induction of ADHD-like symptoms. Research suggests the long-term consequences of ADHD include dire psychological educational and psychiatric consequences. Early diagnosis and intervention is important in preventing the debilitating effects of the condition. According to several international studies, ADHD has a genetic link. In addition, there's environmental factors and dietary concerns that many researchers believe increase the risk and in many cases worsen the symptoms. Refined sugar, artificial sweeteners and chemical food additives nutritional deficiencies, preservatives and food allergies are all causes of ADD and ADHD. In children, a particular cause is related to a lack of interest or forcing children to learn in a manner that they're not geared to learn. Some children learn better by seeing or doing. These are kinesthetic people rather than by hearing. The severity of the symptoms can vary greatly from individual to individual depending on the environment, the diet and other factors. Children may exhibit some of the following symptoms. Difficulty in concentrating and diminished focus. Easily distracted. Easily bored. Difficulty organising or completing tasks. Prone to losing things. Doesn't listen. Difficulty in following instructions. Fidgety behaviour. Squirming. Extreme difficulty being still or being quiet and impatience. Adults may exhibit some of the following. Difficulty focusing and concentrating on a task, a project or a conversation. Overwhelming emotional and physical restlessness. Frequent mood swings. Prone to anger and a hot temper. Disorganised. A low tolerance of people, situations and surroundings. Unstable relationships. An increased risk for addiction. The most common treatment of ADD and ADHD today is using medications like Ritalin and Adderall, both of which have been linked to suicidal thoughts and personality changes. Ritalin is a central nervous system stimulant and this can cause nervousness, agitation, anxiety, insomnia, vomiting, an increased heart rate, increased blood pressure and even psychosis. Stimulants are also linked to chronic fatigue, burnout, oxidative damage, premature ageing and a number of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Adderall is an amphetamine and it's highly addictive with prolonged use. Side effects include tremors, hallucinations, muscle twitches, high blood pressure, fast or regular heartbeats and extreme mood swings. With these side effects it's easy to see why so many people are seeking effective natural remedies for the ADHD. The good news is there are natural remedies for ADD and ADHD that are both effective and without scary side effects of the prescription medications. Some dietary changes. You should have additive free unprocessed food. Due to the toxic nature of food additives, it's best to eat unprocessed whole foods. Additives like artificial sweeteners, preservatives and colourings that exist within the processed food can be especially problematic for people with ADD and ADHD. Foods high in B vitamins 
can help to maintain a healthy nervous system. So make sure to include organic wild animal products and lots of green leafy vegetables in the diet. According to the University of Maryland Medical Center, vitamin B6 is needed for the body to make and to use essential brain chemicals, including serotonin, dopamine and norepinephrine. In fact, one preliminary study found B6 is slightly more effective than Ritalin in improving behaviour. Incorporate wild tuna, bananas, wild salmon, grass-fed beef and other food rich in B6. Tryptophan is an essential amino acid and it helps the body to synthesise protein and aid in the production of serotonin. Serotonin plays significant roles in sleep, inflammation, emotional moods and more. In many individuals who are suffering from ADD and ADHD, imbalances in serotonin levels have been indicated according to the University of Michigan Health System. Serotonin is related to impulse control and aggression, two of the symptoms of ADD and ADHD. For some people, especially those with ADHD, breakfast helps the body to properly regulate the blood sugar and to stabilise hormone fluctuations. Eat a breakfast that contains at least 20 grams of protein. Not only is wild-caught salmon rich in vitamin B6, it's also packed with omega-3 fatty acids, and studies have showed lower levels of omega-3 fatty acids are linked to more learning and behavioural problems. Sugar is the primary trigger for most children and some adults with ADHD. Avoid any form of concentrated sugar, including candy, desserts, soda and even fruit juices. Some researchers and parents report worsening behaviour when their child eats gluten. This may indicate a sensitivity to the protein found in wheat. Avoid all foods made with wheat, such as bread, pasta and cereal. Look for gluten-free or even grain-free alternatives. Most cow's milk contains A1 casein, and this can trigger a similar reaction to gluten, and therefore it should be eliminated. If problematic symptoms arise after eating the dairy, you should discontinue use. Goat's milk, however, does not contain the protein, and it's a better option for many individuals with ADD or ADHD. Children with ADD and ADHD can be sensitive to a variety of food dyes and colourings, therefore all processed food should be avoided. Colouring and dye appear in nearly every commercially processed food. Food dyes can be found in sports drinks, candy, cake mixes, chewable vitamins and even toothpaste. While some studies have shown caffeine can help with some of the ADHD symptoms, it's wise to minimise or avoid caffeine, as these studies have not been validated. In addition, the side effects of caffeine include anxiety and nervousness, so this can contribute to the symptoms of ADD and ADHD. Monosodium glutamate and hydrolyzed vegetable protein are two additives which are believed to decrease dopamine levels in both children and adults. Dopamine is associated with the brain's pleasure and reward system. For individuals suffering from ADD and ADHD, a balanced level of dopamine is essential. Nitrites are commonly found in lunch meat, canned foods and many processed foods. They are linked to an increase in childhood type 1 diabetes, certain types of cancer and irritable bowel syndrome. In addition, it can cause a rapid heart rate difficulty breathing and restlessness, and this can worsen the ADHD symptoms. Artificial sweeteners are bad for your health, and those living with ADHD can have devastating side effects. Artificial sweeteners create biochemical changes in the body, some of which can harm cognitive function and emotional balance. Soy is a common food allergen, and it can disrupt hormones that cause ADHD. You should eliminate the top seven allergens, including soy, wheat and conventional dairy, as well as peanuts, tree nuts, eggs and shellfish. In addition, eliminate any food or beverage that are a personal allergen. These could include papaya, avocados, bananas and kiwis. For those with latex allergies, or coriander, caraway and fennel, all from the same family, and also chocolate. 
The challenge for parents of a child with ADD and ADHD is not only to find an effective natural remedy, but also to create an environment that supports their creativity and spurs learning. Children living with ADHD need reassurance that they aren't a bad child. If you only respond to their negative behaviours, it can trigger more negative behaviours. Find ways to compliment your child while holding them accountable for their actions. Remember, they're more than just their behaviours. A child knows when you're truly excited and happy for them. Provide them with opportunities where they can succeed. Engage them in creative activities such as painting and sketching. Many top art competitions in the world have quick sketch competitions and these force artists to provide their best work in 30 to 45 minutes. Celebrate your child's focus and creative spirit in these type of challenges. For children with ADHD, burning some of the excess energy on the day can help to balance the hormone levels and provide your child with the building blocks for healthy bones and muscles. Find the methods of organisation that work best for your child. This can include a notebook with a checklist of daily to-dos, a chart on the wall or reminders in their smartphone or their tablet. Teach them how to prioritise tasks including schoolwork, home, chores, exercise and fun activities. Since ADD and ADHD is linked to the foods consumed and it also has a genetic link, it's essential that your child learns what foods cause the ADD and the ADHD and which ones help to cure it. Spend time with your child exploring interesting ways to cook wild fish, grass-fed beef, free-range poultry and fresh fruits and vegetables. Engage them in the menu planning and the cooking process and the dietary changes recommended above. According to research published in Clinical Psychopharmacology and Neuroscience, sleep deprivation and disturbances to your circadian rhythm can contribute to the onset or the intensity of ADHD symptoms. Plus, researchers point out that the long-term consequences of sleep problems in individuals with ADHD include obesity, poor academic performance and disrupted parent-child interactions. If your child is struggling with a sleep disorder or constantly waking in the middle of the night, consider natural interventions like melatonin, light therapy and relaxation techniques. It's also important to establish a nighttime routine that involves sticking to the same bedtime and waking up time every day. You can check out my other videos on melatonin and my video on herbs to help you sleep for more information. Research out of Japan shows individuals who habitually breathe through the mouth are more likely than those who breathe through the nose to have ADHD and sleep disturbances. This is due to a difference in oxygen load in the brain and this can adversely affect brain function in both children and adults. Mouth breathing causes an increase in oxygen load to the prefrontal cortex, thereby causing central fatigue and sleep disturbances. The main cause of mouth breathing is obstructed nasal airways. To avoid mouth breathing, you could use nasal dilators to help to decrease the airflow resistance or get your child to wear a face mask at night. This is called continuous positive air pressure therapy. Talk to a paediatrician about these options. Create an organisational system that works for you. There's no one organisational solution that works for everyone. Find the system that works best for you. A simple pen and paper checklist may be what some need, while others might need more technical application that could include setting automatic reminders, prioritising tasks and more. There's a variety of apps available for smartphones and tablets for productivity. These tools can help you to plan ahead and prioritise the tasks. In addition, consider noise cancelling headphones to help to stave off the distractions in the home or the office. Regular exercise not only helps to build muscle and bone, but it helps to relieve stress. In addition to regular exercise routine, try something that engages your fun genes also. Dance, martial arts, play, tennis, volleyball. These are all great ways to burn calories, balance hormones and reduce stress.
Recent research shows sleep deprivation and circadian rhythm disturbances are associated with the induction of ADHD symptoms. For adults struggling with a sleep disorder, melatonin foods and supplements, light therapy and neurofeedback therapy can help to alleviate the symptoms. Also, sticking to a healthy, well-balanced diet, getting daily exercise and practicing relaxation techniques can help you to get the rest that you need. If you don't have a sleep disorder, but you need to change your sleep habits, focus on establishing routine bedtimes that allow for at least seven hours of sleep per night and turn off technology 45 minutes prior to sleep. For many people, removing ADD and ADHD trigger food and replacing them with healthy foods that naturally fight the ADHD and ADD will dramatically help to treat the common neurological and behavioural disorders. Remember, detoxifying from years of chemicals and unhealthy foods can take some time. Stick with the programme above. Cognitive behaviour therapy can improve ADHD symptoms in adults and adolescents, especially combined with medication. Different forms of behavioural therapy are part of standard ADHD care. According to decent clinical evidence, regular exercise can reduce the ADHD symptoms. Children and adolescents on different exercise programs saw improvements in attention, behaviour and cognition. Different nerve stimulation techniques can moderately improve symptoms such as inattention and hyperactivity. The FDA have approved a nerve stimulation device for ADHD treatment in children. Personally, I've been using the SOTA BioTuner for 10 years and the Neo Neurophone by Patrick Flanagan for around two years. Mindfulness based therapies improve ADHD symptoms in multiple studies, mostly in adults. For children, the therapy can be more effective when applied to both them and their parents. In different small studies of children with ADHD, neurofeedback increased the activity of the brain regions involved in attention and impulse control. Neurofeedback might be as effective as cognitive behavioural therapy or drug treatment for ADHD. Poor sleep quality impairs attention and other cognitive functions. Different sleep interventions improved cognitive performance and overall well-being in children with ADHD. In four clinical studies, yoga reduced hyperactivity and inattention in children with ADHD. White noise improved memory, attention and language skills in four studies of ADHD patients. According to limited clinical evidence, massage can enhance focus, behaviour and mood control in children and adolescents with ADHD. Psychological therapies with horses or dogs can improve the symptoms. This was shown in three studies. Having a pet may provide similar benefits, but studies haven't confirmed this yet. Activities in nature, like a walk in the park, can enhance attention in children with ADHD. Parents of children with ADHD reported symptom improvement after outdoor activities. Omega-3 supplements have been shown to benefit ADHD patients, as the EPA, DHA in the fish oil are critical for brain function and they're also anti-inflammatory. Supplementation has been shown to reduce symptoms and to improve learning. Children with ADHD may need more B vitamins to help with the formation of serotonin and especially vitamin B6. You could check out my video on the MTHFR polymorphism to assess the psychological symptoms to determine if they're likely an under or an over methylator and then supplement accordingly to correct this imbalance. Flax oil is rich in omega-3s and it improves symptoms of ADHD in one clinical trial. It's recommended anyone with ADHD take 500 milligrams of calcium 250 milligrams of magnesium and 5 milligrams of zinc twice a day. All play a role in relaxing the nervous system and a deficiency may exacerbate symptoms. ADHD may be connected to digestive issues, therefore taking good quality probiotics can help to maintain the intestinal health. The probiotic I would use is called VSL3. You can also add probiotic foods like kefir, kimchi, kombucha and yogurt.
GABA is a calming amino acid. It could be taken at 250 milligrams twice per day. There's some debate about whether this GABA can cross the blood-brain barrier. Therefore, some of the GABAergic herbs mentioned later may provide better results. Rhodiola rosea has been proven effective at improving the focus of both adults and children. It works by increasing the sensitivity in the neurological and the nervous system that produces serotonin and dopamine, which are both essential for effective ADHD symptom control. Essential oils of vetiver and cedarwood are effective in improving focus and calming down children with ADHD. For memory and concentration, rosemary and peppermint oil have been shown to improve alertness while enhancing memory. For a calming effect, ylang ylang and lavender can be effective, while frankincense brings emotional wellness, clarity and heightened cognitive function. Bacopa can enhance cognitive function, attention and reaction time. According to one review, Bacopa improves language skills, hyperactivity and attention deficit in children and adolescents. A couple of studies have associated ADHD with a zinc deficiency. Zinc supplementation can improve hyperactivity and behaviour in zinc deficient ADHD patients. ADHD patients tend to have lower magnesium levels. Magnesium supplementation alone or in combination with B6 improved symptoms in two clinical trials. The benefits of supplementing may be limited to magnesium deficient patients. However, most patients are already deficient in magnesium and magnesium is responsible for the activation of over 300 functions in the body. Therefore, long-term supplementation can have profound benefits. Preliminary research has shown the potential of Korean ginseng in reducing inattention and hyperactivity in ADHD patients. Pine bark extract picogenol can enhance attention and cognitive function in children with ADHD. Not only does it increase cerebral circulation, it's also a powerful antioxidant which will neutralise free radicals. ADHD patients are often deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin D supplementation can enhance attention in children with ADHD and increase the effectiveness of drug treatment. You can get a 25-hydroxy vitamin D blood test and then supplement accordingly. Some studies have associated iron deficiency with ADHD. According to limited clinical evidence, iron supplementation may partly improve symptoms in iron deficient children. Natural sources of iron supplementation should be used and never synthetic. Ginkgo biloba was moderately effective for ADHD symptoms in three smaller trials. Phosphodiethylserine alone or in combination with omega-3s enhanced attention, mood and behaviour in two studies on children with ADHD. A traditional Chinese herbal remedy named Ningdong was effective as a standard drug treatment for ADHD in one clinical trial and it also caused fewer side effects than prescription medication. A review of 15 clinical trials concluded the amino acid L-tyrosine can boost attention and cognitive performance in stressful and demanding situations. Those dealing with ADHD report uridine monophosphate increases cognition without causing anxiety or mood changes. This is backed up by science and it shows uridine reduces the side effects associated with medication that affect the dopamine and the GABA neurotransmission. Others report uridine monophosphate helps bring clarity of thought. Resolving problems is faster and easier. Math is easier and making decisions from a clear emotional state simplifies life. The common thread through most reviews on the uridine monophosphate is greater success when it's taken also with a choline like alpha TPC and with omega-3s. This synergy is backed up by multiple clinical trials shown to increase synaptic connections. St. John's wort is most commonly used as a natural remedy for depression and other common issues like anxiety, tiredness, loss of appetite and trouble sleeping. It's also used to treat heart palpitations, moodiness, 
the symptoms of ADHD, obsessive compulsive disorder, seasonal affective disorder, and the menopause. Mounting evidence in ADHD research also suggests a strong relationship between inflammation and ADHD. Elevated levels of inflammatory cytokines, like interleukin-1 and C-reactive protein, are turning out to be diagnostic markers of ADHD. These cytokines induce changes in dopamine and norepinephrine in the prefrontal cortex. A recent study in Taiwan showed high doses of taurine significantly reduced interleukin-1 and C-reactive protein, which in turn reduced the hyperactive behaviour. L-theanine is extracted from green tea. The L-theanine can also help with sleep disturbances caused by mental health conditions. It improved the sleep percentage and the efficacy in two clinical trials on almost 100 boys with ADHD, 20 people with major depressive disorder and 17 people with schizophrenia. Valerian helps to reduce hyperactivity in those who are dealing with ADHD. Passionflower, one of the gabinergic supplements. There's many positive benefits. It can help to reduce and possibly eliminate insomnia, anxiety, inflammation from skin irritations and burns, treat the menopause, help ADHD and even more serious conditions like seizures, high blood pressure and asthma. Hops are commonly used orally for anxiety, sleep disorders such as inability to sleep or disturbed sleep due to rotating or nighttime work hours. Restlessness, tension, excitability, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, nervousness and irritability. N-acetylcysteine is one of the body's precursors to create glutathione, its master antioxidant. Users of NAC commonly report the negative symptoms caused by ADHD medications disappear. It's well known dopamine is important for focus. In one study of 85 children and teenagers with ADHD, a combination of macuna pruins with vitamins, minerals and other supplements improved the symptoms in 77% of the cases. Lithium orotate is nutritional microdosed lithium. It's not the prescription drug lithium carbonate used for bipolar disorder. Lithium orotate is great if you're dealing with ADHD because the lithium calms the hyperactivity in the brain. Supplementing with lithium doesn't change your state of consciousness. It simply helps to bring you back to feeling normal and happy. You could try a dose of five milligrams to see how you react. If you experience no negative reactions, you can try another five milligram dose in a couple of hours. You'll likely experience the full benefits of lithium orotate within a week of consistent use. Echinacea angustifolia is the recommended species to help with specific ailments related to ADD and ADHD. Both adults and children suffering from ADD and ADHD have a higher than normal chance of experiencing emotional disturbances, especially anxiety, depression and social phobias. Again, like with most herbs, dose is the key. It's recommended people only take 20 milligrams at a time and no more. In fact, taking more than 20 milligrams per dose can actually cancel out the echinacea benefits that relieve anxiety. DMAE, dimethyl aminoethanol, and centrophenoxine. A prescription form of dimethyl aminoethanol, called Dianol, was used in the 60s and the 70s to treat learning and behaviour problems in children, what's now called ADHD. A three-month double-blind placebo-controlled trial involved 74 children and it was conducted in 1975. They were split into groups and given 40 milligrams of Ritalin or 500 milligrams of DMAE. Positive results from the trial showed the DMAE was comparable to Ritalin in effectiveness in controlling the ADHD. Some people use CDP choline as an alternative to stimulants prescribed for ADHD. The CDP choline is a precursor in the brain to acetylcholine, one of the neurotransmitters involved in learning, memory, focus and attention. 
through changes in the diet, lifestyle, addition of nutrients and trial and error with various herbs and alternative treatments. The symptoms of ADHD can be dramatically reduced, if not completely eliminated. Always consult a professional before making any changes or adding supplements, herbs or medication.